Before going on with this theory, just letting you know, I will probably not be making anything on FNAF for a little while, simply because I just don't want to. It, it seems like I just, I just don't want to seem like a FNAF channel, and I just want to mix it up. I guess that's what I'm trying to say. Also, before I begin, I just want to say, Ruin was kind of a letdown for me. Mainly because... See, the reason the place is ruined is never explained. And they're also so off glitches, the jump scares aren't scary, and they come out of nowhere sometimes, like, because you don't know what you did wrong. So originally, I was going to make a video explaining how Ruin... Ruin FNAF... <laughs> That's a joke! Now you laugh! Okay, but before... Uh, there, there was one thing, though that just interested me the most about this game and also Ruin would just been way better as a prequel I'm, I'm just gonna say that but you know what, just never mind it so anyway, the thing that interested me the most was Candy Cadet now in case you don't know, one thing that I will constantly get hate on in the comments is that I think FNAF 6 is the canon ending to FNAF because the sinkhole stuff makes literally no sense to me but seeing the FNAF movie it could be possible either way the fact that Mike and Vanessa are about the same age and in the same time, so... Ha! But what interested me about Candy Cadet is I was ready to throw in the towel on the theory that FNAF 6 was the canon ending to the timeline. But I realized one crucial detail many people forget about Candy Cadet. Not only can you, can you just clean this guy afterwards and put him in the FNAF 6 location, but here's the thing. In FNAF 6, you don't have to buy Candy Cadet. That was interesting to me because it would be different if we saw Lefty's body or Scrap Baby's remains or something relating to like the main animatronics that you can either salvage or throw out or like help you or whatnot. But instead, we see Candy Cadet. But why would they include him if you don't need him for the story of FNAF 6? This confused me for a while, but then something clicked for me. It's a previous location. What if this was the original pizza place and Henry just made another pizza place to finish the whole thing off? More on that in my solving every mystery in the FNAF timeline. Oh, and also the reason being is perhaps Henry decided just to build another pizza place and it ended up actually falling through the sinkhole. And so and luckily he didn't use all his, of his main guys for that. So he just ended up using the old one, like the one where his daughter died. So I, I feel like he was probably going to do a newer approach to it to, you know, appeal to a lot more people. But he just ended up using the older location because it was more classy and also the other one just fell through the sinkhole, if that makes any sense to you guys. However, when I'm addressing the fact that, you know, Candy Cadet is ruined here, the exact same thing happens to him in Ultimate Custom Night. Candy Cadet is broken down, and he doesn't have to be bought in FNAF 6. Now, if you needed to buy Candy Cadet, that would be different, but you don't. It's optional. Now, it is confirmed that Ultimate Custom Night takes place right after FNAF 6, but this doesn't make sense. Why would he appear in these as broken if you didn't have to buy him? And also, in Ruin, when you insert a coin, you automatically get a story and not candy i think i have the answer to this and more and it's all from his story in ruin listen to how his story goes and now i will tell you a story about a mother and a little boy who lived alone in a cabin in the dark woods there was a monster in the woods but the mother caught it and kept it locked in the basement the monster always made scary noises at night, but the mother would tell the boy not to worry because it could never get out. Then she would sing the boy a lullaby to sleep. One day, the monster stopped calling and instead listened and learned the lullaby. The next day when the mother went out to find food, the monster sang the lullaby from the basement. The little boy heard the lullaby and opened the door. A mother and a little boy who lived alone in a small cabin in the woods. Now, many will come to the conclusion that this is an analogy for Gregory and somebody else, but after looking it into it deeper, it's not. It's the Aftons. When we see the house in FNAF 4 and FNAF 6, it's surrounded by forest. 
And this is talking about Michael and Mrs. Afton. Because in Midnight Motorist, the most likely conclusion is that Michael ran away from home and Miss Afton has just given up at this point and William is still angry. Okay, also, by the way, uh, go, I forget how you say his name. I think it's um, Squire Squawk, I think is what his name is. I'll put his video in the description. But he's the one that kind of came up with that theory that it's uh, Michael and Miss Afton and nothing else. Like, a lot of people thought Michael was the one in the chair, but really it's Miss Afton. Now, um, based on the FNAF movie trailer, that's probably the case. But, uh, yeah, just go, just go show him some love if you want to see that theory in full. But that's just the gist of it. He explains it in more detail. So then we hear about the monster. What is the monster? It's William. At this point, the animatronics aren't monsters. But out of everything William has done, this man is probably the definition of a true monster. And we hear that the monster was locked in the basement. Basically saying William would spend all his time in the Sisha location. Down in the basement. Then Candy Cadet says he made scary noises at night. And the mother would sing a lullaby to sleep. I am not sure if the lullaby is just a lullaby or maybe just a reassurance. Probably the latter. And the scary noises are William's experiments. As for the next part, it seems it is talking about the monster luring the child into the basement. But really, it that right there is also an analogy. William realizes about his family and most likely tries to lure in Michael. More on this in a moment. Then the story ends with the mother going out to find food and while she is gone, the monster lures the boy to the basement and the boy opens the door. And that's where the story ends. What this means is this. The mother going out to find food is her leaving William. Or based on the FNAF movie trailer for like that one frame, uh, maybe she decided to rid herself of this world. It depends. We'll have to wait until October. Meet me in theaters on October 27th, dudes. Or t October 28th. Depends if I'm working that day. Yes, I, I have a drop besides YouTube. So, yay. So now, it's just Michael and William in the house. Because, you know, Elizabeth, I think, is dead at this point. The crying child is also bit. And uh, this is somehow relating to the mimic. I will explain that in just a moment as well. Now, we also have some conflict here. Because seeing from the FNAF trailer, it's possible that William is not the father of Elizabeth and Michael. Either that or Michael actually is a father now. Now, the reason being for this is it does say that, you know, like, Abby might be, like, Michael's little sister. But it still could be a little bit possible that he's his that she's his daughter. But, um, let's see, remember, like, I, I don't really have any confirmation. I think my timeline's gonna be completely broken when the FNAF movie comes out. But since I don't know how the FNAF movie's gonna go... I can't really range assumptions off of that just now, so just deal just deal with that lore for right now, okay? Thank you. All right. So yeah, as I said, but anyway, this is like leads to after Elizabeth's death, Michael is lured into the basement to try and find his sister. Because I'm pretty sure it wasn't the whole point. He went to this location, and he was not knowing that it wasn't William who lured him down there. Either William has become Springtrap now, or William is still on the run from the law, leading to Ennard being the mimic like creature that lures Michael down there. Now in this location I know Ender is not like a fully fleshed out thing now, but you know we see that um a uh, baby was not really necessarily alive at the point and it was just Ender controlling her basically. And so using her voice Ender uh, technically lures him down there. Now, what does this have to do with solving the Lord of Candy Cadet and Ruin and the whole fin final timeline era? Well, this. Based on the facts from earlier, it's most likely that it wasn't Michael who ran the first pizza place. Reason being is because we see Michael would follow paragraph 4 based on all his actions, which means that most likely the building of the original pizza place was destroyed and whoever ran the place bought Candy Cadet. And the reason he is in Ultimate Custom Night later is probably because all right, um, about this whole thing real quick, I also had a theory that Michael is the player in Ultimate Custom Night through certain traits, which I'll explain in the Solving Every FNAF Mystery video, hopefully coming up soon. So if you're wondering why I think that, there's like a whole section I'm making on explaining of why that is, so stay tuned for that. I trust you, it, and the, trust me, it is good evidence, so don't go ahead and automatically hate on me until you see all the evidence, but if you do have something that I don't know, then please put in the comments 
I heard a door opening. Sorry. <laughs> Man, the weird stuff happens around this condo. Alright, so then why would Michael see Candy Cadet and no one else? Because if you look at, you know, the Ultimate Customized roster and everything around, Candy Cadet's the only thing from this ruined state that is in Michael's memory. So why is that, and there's no update for Glamrocks or anything? Well, it's quite simple, actually. He is the only salvageable animatronic. Actually, no, that's not it. But I'll explain that in a moment, too. The blob will most likely get turned into Molten Freddy, the marionette, and Scrap Baby, and Burn Trap turns into Scrap Trap. Uh, more on that later, as I said. But regarding the other characters, most likely, Henry, Michael, and whoever's working with him knows they don't have souls. But Candy Cadet is the only one that reminds Michael of his father. Through the story, Candy Cadet tells him, making it truly disturb Michael. And the fact that Candy Cadet doesn't specify the story makes it even more disturbing to Michael, making him in the office in Ultimate Custom Night. So yeah, Candy Cadet's story is about how Michael got into this situation in the first place, but then... They investigate Ruin, realizing that Candy Cadet survived the fire of the first Pizza Plex and makes Michael speculate him. Then he traumatizes Michael with that for later on in Ultimate Custom Night. And so that's why you don't see Candy Cadet still functional. That's why he looks ruined in Ultimate Custom Night. They look the exact same with that. That's the reasoning why. So then, Michael works at the Pizza Place, the second one, in FNAF 6. And you can buy Candy Cadet if you want to. And that is how this robot solves the final parts of the timeline. Or, well, basically ruin. Well, both of them. So, also, if you were wondering why they don't speculate the Mimic, most likely because they can't find him, because we see this Mimic just hangs out downstairs and also uh, fighting a human male adult versus a child is probably going to make a big difference. And also the fact that the adults probably came prepared with them. Alright. So, then the only other thing I have to ask is, as far as the reason why this place in Ruin is filled with sewage and whatnot, I don't know. Probably because this building is trashed, but the ceiling is dry, indicating it didn't come from the ceiling. Most likely this place was actually just abandoned for so long that everyone who had trash just resorted to this place being a human dump. And... You know, like a literal dump, you know, where you did just pause all your trash and everything. That's the only thing I can think of. How long has my autofocus been off? Was my autofocus literally off? Was my autofocus literally just that whole time? Ah, oh, well that sucks. So guys, if you saw my camera was blurry, apparently, uh, so I have an autofocus feature. And apparently half the time this thing does not work. So I'm sorry for that. If, uh... My face looked blurry yet a few times. But yeah, that's literally... Um... How Candy Cadet solved Ruin. In the FNAF 6 timeline. I hope you guys enjoyed this. And uh, I'm Complex to Live. I am going to take a break from Five Nights at Freddy's for a while. Wait, well, so like the only time I'm going to cover Five Nights at Freddy's now is when I'm editing the other things together for the Solving Earth FNAF timeline i'm gonna try not to put too many parts out mainly because i know if i get to like this third or fourth section i'm going my whole uh, timeline might fall apart due to the fnaf movie so i'm gonna try not to launch that many parts or i might do an updated section it depends but anyway i just think the one thing i gotta thank you guys for is just even if this video just gets one view at least i'm you know at least i'm entertaining you guys enough to where you take the time to watch this very small channel. I really hope that uh, you guys can, you know, just share the channel and then just, you know, just can have it to continue to grow. I don't plan to ever be, like, a popular channel. I don't even really expect to have a million subscribers. All I, all I want is just at least a thousand, at least enough to get eligible, and I guess just in a way where you guys just take a ton some time out of your day and just sit back and just listen to this. I mean, I'm really just more of a storyteller YouTuber, so it's like if um, you're driving or something, I feel like I'd be a good guy you can just listen to in your car. But anyway, that's the whole Ruin theory. Uh, yeah, Ruin was not my favorite game. 
I still haven't completed it myself. But I, I hope you guys enjoyed this theory. And I guess I'll, I'll either see you in August because I'm making a tribute on FNAF. So if I don't see, I think that's going to be the time where I post that. But I'm going to make the tribute. But overall, I hope you guys enjoyed this theory. I'm Complex to Live. And I will see you guys on the other side. Bye-bye. Also expect a Western...